You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hello and welcome to Mini Episode X. Mini Episode X. That works. So, um, yeah, we're not really going to have a full episode this week. No, th- uh, this, this is going to come out uh, May 20th of 2018. Normally you'd be listening to Episode 199, but because it is the May Long Weekend... So everybody's off doing crazy stuff and adventuring and partying. So we're recording this right after we recorded the last episode. 198. So 198. So we're, we're not really prepared. We're not prepared. We, we, were, we forgot to mention in the last episode that we didn't know what we were going to have for next weekend. So, which is now, this weekend, as you're which listening is, to yeah. it. So through the magic of time travel, we've decided that uh, we didn't want to just leave you guys hanging. We didn't want to throw in... Just a, hey, guess what, uh, there's no episode this week, or we didn't want to not record anything at all. So we decided, ah, we can throw something real quick together, and we can talk about stuff. So so this is uh, the Rusted Robot Podcast. Yep. I'm Sean. I'm Josh. And together we are the Wild Stallions. No, we're not. No. No, that's okay. Bill that's, and Ted. That's Bill Three, and Ted. which we talked about In last week. Episode. Yes. My name is Optimus Prime. Hello, I am C-3PO, human cyborg relations. I am Locutus, a Borg. Resistance is futile. You're like a machine underneath, right? But sort of alive outside? I'm a cybernetic organism, living tissue over a metal endoskeleton. You're not quite, uh, human, are you? No, sir. I'm an android. These aren't the droids we're looking for. Counterfeit facsimile replica. We need some sort of robot. Ah, crap. I'm some sort of robot. What are your prime directives? Serve the public trust. Protect the innocent. Uphold the law. By your command. So we're going to do all, get through all our quick segments. So there, you just heard the intro. Yes. Uh, here's our obligatory plug. Oh, you, you should go to Jump City Comic Books, which your wife and sister-in-law own. This is Katie and Julie from the Jump City Comics, and you're listening to the Rusted Robot Podcast. Yeah, uh, 38 Pine Street North, Finns, Ontario, Canada, and in the basement of the One Wall, Unit 106. Uh, turn left when you get off the glass elevator. That's right. Okay, so we got the obligatory plug-in. Oh, the second one is, of course, which you always forget, is the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. I don't forget it. I just don't mention it. You don't mention it. Because it's not personal to you. It's your podcast. It's my podcast, which I do need to get you on one of these days. Okay. Okay. Well, I think you had me on the fear episode, didn't you? Uh, yes, you had a brief segment on fear, uh, rational fears. Hi, my name is Josh. My rational fear is when you work all night alone and you leave work and you don't see anybody for your entire walk home, that, am I really the last man on earth? No, there's got to be people around. And I know it's rational because people still exist. But it still comes up every so often. But uh, that's soulforgepodcast.com, uh, at soulforgepod on Twitter, uh, soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. Make sure you listen, subscribe on iTunes, go to the website, like the page on Facebook, and tell all your friends about it, I guess, maybe, perhaps. So, uh, we're going to talk about, on this one, uh, RPG. Gamers Because you, I introduced you to uh, D and D. Yes, the year was 2015, and that was my year of new things. So I started buying and reading comic books that year. I learned all about D and D. There were a few other things that I tried for the very first time in 2015, which, if you listen to previous Rusted Robots, you'll find out about. So you, you've only had experience with two or three systems at this point, right? Uh, whatever we played first. A D and D second edition. Okay, and then we played some zombie thing. We played Dead Ring from Palladium Books. And now I'm playing fifth edition with a group of guys and, okay. a, and one lady. So what? 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 You you played two different D and Ds at this point. Yeah. Which one do you like better? Well, it's uh, it's hard to compare the two because uh, you, Josh, uh, your dungeon master style was very in your head, but Mark, who is the new D and D master guy, he. Has uh, he's a miniature maps guy? He's got little maps. He he puts uh, 
rooms together on the board and shows us all it, who we are in figures, like little mini yeah, miniatures. miniatures. Yeah, so it's it's a very different style. Um, I, I can't compare the two. Okay. So, uh, I've played RPGs for many years. Many, many uh, I started playing when I was 14. And now you're 36? Uh, no, I'm 37. Are you 37? Yeah. 2018. You're going to be 37? Yeah, I'm going to be 37 in a couple months. Because so. you're 36 right now. Yeah. So I, 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 well, I can't remember my own age, so who cares? Okay, sounds but good. yeah, so right. I've been playing for, for a long, long time. Yes. Um, so we're going to give you an overview of different RPGs. What is the Geekly Oddcast? It's a panel show of television... I mean, seriously, where else was I supposed to go and watch Gomez Adams ride a rocket ship on a railroad track? Gaming. And the dice say... 17. Oh my god, 17 is Mystic Quest. And whatever comes to mind. Why does Zod need a starship? Alternating Thursdays on The Geekly Oddcast. Uh, let's go backwards in time. I started playing Starfinder recently. Starfinder. Which is based on Pathfinder. Okay. Which is based on D&D. And D&D was created by Gary Gygax. It was, but this is based on, I think, 4th or 3rd, 3.5 edition. Okay. So it it's a bit clunkier in some ways than the new D&D. Okay. But it's more adaptive in ways. Hmm. Okay. I'm... Enjoying the game. The Game Master's got a good style. Oh, so you're not the, uh, the no. master? No. Uh, you get to play, actually. I get to play. Ooh. Which is why I'm I'm so hyped about it. I guess so. I, friend of the show, Nate, uh, he, he's a good he's a listener and he's a good friend of ours and he hangs out at uh, Jump City and he's a part-time employee. Have I met Nate? I believe so. Okay. So, Nate runs the game. He's mm-hmm. a fantastic Game Master. Although I really think he... Because if you're a dungeon master for D&D, for Starfinder, I really think you should be a Star Lord. But nobody agrees with me on that one. Huh. Imagine that. It's, it's D&D in space. It's literally that. Um, the spaceship mechanics work kind of weird. All ships are the same size, no matter what size your ship is. Okay. You take up the same hex size, ah. no matter what size your ship is. Mm-hmm. It, it's interesting. Uh, the, start, the combat is smooth and fluid. It works pretty quick. Um, I now I picked up a system called Dr- the Dresden Files. It's a fate-based system, hmm. which is less roll <laughs> dice and more roll playing. Ah. Um, similar to Masquerade. This one you have fate dice, you have fate points. It's a complicated, long story ma- method of making your character. It's interesting. But I have yet to find anybody who's been willing to play with me yet. And why is that, do you think? Um, I think it might be the universe. Most people don't know the Dresden Files. I've heard of the Dresden Files. I, I would recommend listening to the audiobooks. But they're read by James Marsters. Okay. And uh, he is famous for playing... Spike on Buffy. Yes. Um, fantastic audiobooks. Uh, some of the best out there. Okay. And it's a noir series. So, like... That leads itself to intrigue in, in RPGs. It's, mm. a, it's a good system. Okay. So, moving further back, I picked up uh, one called um, Cyber Generation. That sounds interesting. It is based on Cyberpunk, Okay. which is a previous RPG. Ah. This one, it takes place in the dystopian future with megacorps who get control of the government. Yes, dystopian future, not present. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing to do with now. Um, a plague is spreading amongst the youth, which is uh, killing them. Uh, and the government and the corporations are scooping up any kid that gets sick. But it turns out it's not a disease, and it's nanites modifying the children Ooh. so that they become one of different types of modified children. The Tin Man, who's got met- uh, metallic limbs that he can reshape. Ooh, I'd like to have that. Uh, the elect... Uh, I don't remember what the names are offhand, but they have different powers. There's one that can read minds. There's mm. one that can interact with the hollow sphere just without what? any gear. What's the hollow sphere? It's all the virtual stuff around you. Okay. So it's the area of the ads and 
go deeper into this, like the augmented reality. Oh, nice. Okay. You, normally, you just put on your glasses and you interact with it. Mm -hmm. But this character, the, what they call him the wizard, can interact with it and control it and manipulate it. And then they can dive right into computers. Ah. It's very neat. And what's this game called? Cyber Generation. And you have it? I have uh, it and several of the expansion books for it. Pretty interesting. Have you played it? I've played it a couple times. Mm -hmm. and it's pretty good. You have to understand the cyberpunk genre slightly so you to get should, into it. So you should read William Gibson? William Gibson, uh, the Neuromancer series would work, um, Hardwire would work, anything that, that gets you into the terminology and understanding of like, like, like Dirt Boy and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and it's, a good, it's a good series. Okay. Uh, then you, uh, you're back in here. Classic fantasies. We got uh, Palladium, D&D, Ars Magica. They're all trying to do the same thing, but in different ways. Right, okay. It, basically, it, all these games, the one thing they have in common is you build a character, and you go on a quest. Uh, well, or is are these kinds different? So, most RPGs, you're, 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 uh, gr you build your character, and then most of the time, is you hang out in a bar and somebody approaches you. That is the most common opener. Uh, anybody who plays RPGs, the quiet guy in the back of the bar waves you over. That's going to be a common, common opening scene, because it's yeah. hard to start a game. It is. That's that's what I found. Everybody usually uh, the way I find it works is that either you're all in a group together and you've been friends for a long time, or you just happen to be in a bar and there's a bunch of other random people in a bar. It's always a bar or an inn or a tavern or something. Yeah, variant thereof. And then some guy comes up and he says, "Hey, I need some help," and then everybody says, "Oh, I'll help." Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it is a long-standing trope. There is one, uh, a game that I played uh, called um, Rabbits and Warrens. Ooh. Uh, I played it many years ago. This is how I explain the garment of games that you can play. You can play ultra-violent, post-apocalyptic, zombie fighting, kill, kill, kill. Mm -hmm. Or you can play Rabbits and Warrens. Which are actual rabbits. You're, you're a rabbit. Okay. And you have to go about your life as a rabbit, as a party. You have to make decisions and like, oh, I'm going to try to sneak into the garden. Oh, wow. That doesn't... It, 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 it is a game that you go, no. And then you're playing it and then you get really upset because you got caught in a snare. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It sounds like a good game for kids. No, I would not play it with kids. Really? Teen, Pre-teens, yes. Uh-huh. Children, no. Okay, so like 11 year olds. Are when good. your bunny dies, yeah. it gets real sad. I can imagine. It's like I said, I played it and I got caught in a snare and I choked to death Ooh. in a snare. Okay, so five year olds would not be good for playing that game. 11 and up? Yep. They, um, they recently sold that at, at Jump City uh, a My Little Pony Equestria RPG. Wow. Okay. You can play a pony. Of course you can. Yeah. Uh, so any bronies or, or My Little Pony friends in, in our audience, they have that out there. Look it up. It's it's fan. It's fun. I haven't played it. Mm -hmm. I, I flipped through the book when we had it. It's neat. And I know there are many bronies here in Timmins, actually. There are. Okay, I watched every episode because I have a, a small daughter. Yeah. And it's a really good show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I can understand where somebody would... Like, uh, a, a grown man would be like, I'm going to watch this. And John Delancey's in it, and he played Q on Star Trek The Next Generation. He plays the same character. He plays, he plays what's his name again? Discord. Discord, that's right. He, 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 it is the same character. Like a troublemaker. This doesn't make sense. <laughs> make sense? Oh, what fun is there in making sense? Discord, show yourself! <laughs> Did you miss me, Celestia? I miss you. A, a trickster with near unlimited powers. Yes. So, yes. There's actually a fan theory that it is the same character. So, the My Little Pony universe is part of the Star Trek franchise? No. Okay. Because cause Q is, has unlimited power, he can jump from universe to universe. Aha, uh -huh. right, okay. So, so the, the thing is, he snaps his finger and he disappears in one spot, mm -hmm. and he's gone for a short little time, then he appears back. That's when he was over on the other side bugging at the card, and then he comes back and bugs the ponies, and then he goes back and bugs the card, uh, right. and he comes back and he bugs the ponies, and he goes over and gets punched in the face by Cisco, and he comes back. 
Okay, makes sense. Yeah, I got you. So Star Trek and My Little Pony is not connected, but the character is the same guy. He jumps. He's pretty much the same guy. Okay. He's got the same attitude, though he's more fun in My Little Pony because... It's a kid show. It's a kid show, and he, he can be more fun, and there's no dour Picard bringing him down. Uh, okay, it makes sense. Um, so, yeah. Uh, there's My Little Pony. It, it runs the gauntlet. Uh, I have a Robotech. RPG. Well, that sounds like it would be fun. Uh, produced by Plenty Books. Mm-hmm. It's you're aboard the SDF one when it, it it jumps out to the end of space, and it pick your occupation. You can be a Veritech pilot. You can be a Special Forces guy. You can be a Destroid pilot. Look, the Zentradi are coming to get you. You gotta fight them off. You gotta have your fun in the city. Hmm, that sounds like it might be all right. Uh, you played it? Or? I, I That's the second game I ever played. Oh, okay. Right on. It was very interesting. I played a, a destroyed pilot, and <laughs> I got killed real fast. Oh. Because I, I chose the Spartan, which has a lot of missiles. Okay. But you, once you're out of missiles, you're Toast. Out, of, out of missiles. Right, because there's no other weapons. No. Uh, that would be unfortunate. No, but it's, it's real awesome when you launch all 44 missiles at once. Yeah. And then you're done. Then you're done. Okay. Then run away. Right. And I didn't run away. Oh, you should have run away. I should have, but I, I ran up and kicked the opponent. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That did... That did nothing. It did one die four points of damage. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I rolled one. And that's another thing. All these games you use dice with, right? You do. You can get the jump, dice at Jump City. Ah. Um, other places have them as well, obviously. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, uh, polynomials... Uh, not polynomial, polyhedrals of different sizes. Okay. Die 4, die 6. Die 12, die 10? Uh, die 8, die 10, die 10, uppercase. Because one is a uh, one percentile, right? And one is the 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, right. and double O. Yes. And then you got your die 20. Which is the most famous. Which is your most funny. Uh, primary <laughs> dice. Yeah. And then you have... In some cases, a die 30. Really? Yeah. Uh, I know of one game that uses a die 30, and it's only used as damage. Oh, okay. Um, It is the least used of the dice, Uh and then there's die 100s. You have one of those, I've seen it. I have a die 100. Instead of rolling two dice, you roll one dice, and then you... Mm-hmm. Try to wait for it to stop rolling because it's basically a ball. Right, exactly. Yes. Because 100 sides is a lot. Yeah, particularly for something that's only like two inches across. Right, exactly. Uh, and and all these dice, there's so many different kinds. Colored dice, metal dice, wooden dice. So, oh yeah, you, you can get... Their, they run the gauntlet from basic cubes and, and different shapes of like just colored plastic with the, the numbers carved into them. Yeah. You can get metal dice, mm-hmm. which are very very nice, but don't play on a wood table or a glass table. Uh, that would be bad, yes. Yeah, uh, make sure you have some, something to roll safely in. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get bone dice. Bone dice? Oh, yeah. Like real bone? Like real bone. Huh. I have not heard of these ones. Uh, you can get... The, they got different cut wood ones. Those are fairly common. Mm-hmm. Uh, the most expensive dice I've ever seen played with. Yeah. I've seen somebody play with jade dice. Jade. Jade. Wow. Uh, they were small. Mm-hmm. They were mini set size, so okay. you're talking about a quarter inch on a side. Ah. But yeah, I've seen somebody play with a jade set, and it was like two hundred dollars for the dice. Ouch. And I'm like, why are you playing with those? Right. Like I've got a bag full of plastic ones that cost me like ten dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've got a lot of dice. Um, you collect dice over time. It's one of those things. Hi, this is Cena Grace, the artist of The Little Depressed Boy, and you are listening to the Rusted Robot Podcast, which, by the way, you should be following them on Twitter and totally subscribing on iTunes. I do not have a lot of dice. No? No. My friend Anne, yeah. she's got a large tackle box full of dice. That's a lot of dice. They're each separated into different colors, because okay. each character she makes, she ends up getting a new set of dice for. Just because? Yep. Yep. That she's one of those players. Um, my other friend has a five-gallon pail of dice. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You just dig in. You need a set of dice here. Dig into the pail. Wow. 
That's a lot of dice. Okay. Yeah. So my two handfuls of like two fists of dice. Yeah. Isn't that much dice? Yeah, well, when you compare it that way. Yeah. Right. But all you need is the basic set. For most games, most games run the basic set. Um, some games you can run just D6. Mm-hmm. Those games are are older style. Games because yeah. they're like, well, what what dice does people get as does everybody have? D well, six Yahtzee dice. Yeah, right. Your basic cube. So there's a lot of those out there. I um, bet. There used to be a whole system based on them. I don't know if they still make D six anymore. I, I don't know. GURPS used to be the same thing. Hmm. So yeah, this has been our little short rando rant about uh, about RPGs to make content so you guys don't forget that we we still love you. Yes. We are the Rusted Robot Podcast, and we are here for your amusement, your listening pleasure. It's important that you have things for your ear holes. And remember, if at first brute force doesn't work, you're not using enough brute force. This has been another episode of the Rusted Robot Podcast. You can contact us by emailing therustedrobot at gmail.com or tweeting us at therustedrobot. Visit our website at therustedrobot.podbean.com. And, if you would, please check us out and like us on Facebook. A five-star review in iTunes is appreciated. The Rusted Robot Podcast was written, produced, scored, edited, engineered, and directed by Sean Vanderloo. Your co-host was Josh Montney. Don't forget to visit Jump City Comics in the 101 Mall and listen to our other show, The Soul Forge Podcast. Visit Sean on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Vanderloo. The Rusted Robot Podcast. Think about it. It started long years ago Weekends, weeknights when the lights are low The word goes around to those in the know The D&D game is going down Time set aside to play in hook a crook Millions of gamers are heading for their books Gather round lads, forget the funny looks Everyone's dungeon bound Said everyone's dungeon bound Come bards from the north, elves off the moor Gamers of work, get down to the store Scratch your neighbor, what's underneath? A wizard or a cleric or a thief Since Sky Gax Rolling their initiative And scarfing down a snack It's fun to fill the form And if you roll some awesome stats You can always earn a couple more Oh, next week Coming back for more Come gnomes from the north Orcs off the moor Freaks and geeks Get down to the store Scratch your neighbor What's underneath? A paladin, a fighter, or a thief Twenty halflings, silent in the field Never held for ransom, never made to yield Half-elven lady, known to be a spy Rolling her charisma while the gentlemen go by Off of work, get down to the store. Scratch your neighbor, what's underneath? A wizard or a cleric or a thief? A human half fork, play the one you like. Bust a couple heads instead of studying for psych. Long sword, short sword, scimitar, a bow. Everyone's a gamer, don't you know? Bards from the north, elves off the moor. Freaks and gamer geeks get down to the store. Scratch your neighbor, what's underneath? A wizard or a cleric or a thief? A paladin, a fighter or a thief? A wizard, a cleric, a thief? Playing a D&D. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon 
or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Thank you.